Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another video where we analyze companies for you, which will help you in terms of your investment thesis or whether you're seeking to do business with them as a salesperson or a partner. Uh, so uh, this is a video with myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, Ted Wayman. And today we're looking at another clean tech business. So these are uh, these are really coming in quite a lot in terms of the requests um, from our viewers. Before we go into uh, analyzing the business and what we found, don't forget to like, share, subscribe our videos. And also, if you are interested in a particular company, whether that's for your investment purposes, whether you're seeking to do business with them, do leave a note in the comment section. In fact, in the last seven weeks or so, every single one of our videos have been from requests from you as the viewers. So uh, your voices will be heard. So do please put those in there. So today we're going to look at uh, Clean Energy uh, uh, Corporation. So, um, and they're the largest provider of um, uh, natural gas, right? So renewable natural gas in the USA. Now they take their natural gas from organic waste. So if you think about, you know, livestock, manure, uh, you know, landfills, things like that, uh, they produce methane, all right, which which they capture and then use uh, as uh, transportation energy. Uh, so they they show themselves as being not only more uh, sustainable product to compared to the the typical. Um, natural gas that you get from uh, petrol, um, but they, uh, they're they also competing to make it uh, at a similar price point. Uh, and so there's a bit, of, a, bit of a bit of knowledge about this because one of the biggest barriers for, for renewable natural gas has always been its price, right? Or the cost. Now for fossil fueled natural gas, the cost is in the region of around 33 to 79 cents per gallon. And clean energy's cost is around 74 cents per gallon. So they're really kind of getting there in terms of cost competitiveness. So, um, so that's part of what you want to look at in terms of the investment there. Uh, but also if you invest in this company way back when it went public, uh, if you are a long-term investor, uh, you wouldn't be sitting very happy right now. However, if you timed it well, you may have been, you may be pretty happy. So we will go into that in more detail here. Uh, and also another thing is uh, Wall Street Bets, um, the, the group on Reddit have had an impact on the price. And we'll talk about that as well later on. So stick around to this video. Firstly, let's thank one of our viewers uh, for, for their request. And this, this request came in actually via website submission rather than YouTube. So a different one for us this time. But William Morris, thank you for your request. Here is your video, sir. Uh, so Ted, let's let's dive straight in on this business because there is a lot to go through here uh, and we'll connect on in terms of the pricing, et cetera. And we can share with our viewers whether this might be a good one to potentially invest in right now. Is it cheap or is it expensive in our financial view of the fundamentals, right? So don't forget viewers, all the other things you want to look at in terms of investment thesis, such as the, the, the knowledge of the industry, the product, the contracts, the executives and the officers, all that other really important stuff you want to consider. We're not gonna cover that. We're just gonna cover the fundamental financial analysis here. So Ted, let, let's, let's take it away for our viewers and help them out. Excellent, okay, so thanks a lot. And good to see you, Moeed. I'm um, good to see you're looking very well. So let's Thank jump you. straight in and look at the financials. So here we go, here is Clean Energy's annual report. It's available on their website. Um, and it is the Form 10K, which they, uh, they filed with the SEC. Um, and uh, you have a very nice glossy front page with some cows on them. Obviously not gonna rain there because the cows are standing up. Uh, and then we actually get the kind of the actual form that has been uh, filed. Um, and we're going to jump down to page 58, which is where we will find the income statement. OK, so here is the income statement. Um, uh, uh, and what we can see here. So quite interesting. Uh, what they're showing is that they have a product and a service. Um, so they are both you know, they're actually delivering the product itself, but they're also providing services. Uh, and what we can do is we can take the revenue from the product. OK, and you'll notice that, you know, obviously we need to be looking at 2020. So we take the revenue from the product um, and we compare that to the product cost of sale. OK, so in effect, 
by comparing these two numbers, we can actually get the, uh, the, the gross margin. So I can tell you, for example, I've, I've done a little calculation myself, um, and that this is a 36% gross margin. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that the product revenue has been falling. So from uh, 307 uh, down to just below 300, um, uh, and now to 251. So the product revenue has been falling, and the uh, the margin has been pretty uh, standard on the on the actual product itself. Uh, the gross margin is about 36%. The service we'll do this in a different color so we can see it. So if we compare the revenue from the service to the cost of sales on the service, they are operating at about a 40% margin, down from 50%. Uh, two years ago in 2018. So this was a 50% margin, uh, or actually 52%. This was 42%. We're now down to 40. Uh, and we can see that the, um, the product has been pretty steady at about 37, 38, 36%. So, you know, quite interesting there um, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the margin. Um, uh, worth just pointing out that we are dealing in, in, you know, when we talk about these numbers, we're dealing in thousands. Uh, so when we talk about, you know, the sales, we're talking about 251,000, 000, so that's about $252 million, uh, $252 million. So about $300 million of total sales down from $350 million two years ago. So this looks like a company that's kind of, you know, down 15% year on year. That's not you know, I'd rather be investing in a growing company rather than a, than a shrinking company, if that makes sense. Um, what else have they got? So there's, uh, there's the selling general and administrative expenses. So they are making a gross profit, the overall gross profit of 106 um, uh, a million, um, uh, and uh, which is about a 36% um, gross margin. Um, uh, and then they've got uh, these, um, uh, the selling general and administrative, and they've also got um, the depreciation and amortization, which is a very big charge, uh, and this results in an operating loss. So they are, they've got their gross profit, they are profitable at a, a kind of on a trading basis, but they're making a loss. And that's really driven by, you know, they've split this out for you specifically to say, look, you know, you know most of this is the depreciation on our assets, suggesting they're going to have a lot of assets sitting on their balance sheet. Um, further down the profit and loss account to see if there's anything else that is kind of you, we want to we want to highlight um so uh nothing nothing excessive nothing really jumping out of this um except that um they do have quite a lot of interest payable um now they've reduced it you can see it was about 15 16 million in 2018 it's down to about 7.5 stays at seven and a half um so they've managed to reduce their debt but now their their debt is holding steady so they're gonna have debt because they are paying interest and obviously if you compare the interest to the operating loss they can't afford that interest basically although they can afford it in cash terms uh, because a lot of the loss is driven by this depreciation charge which is an accounting adjustment not a cash um, uh, it has no effect in the cash of the, of the of the business anyway bottom line summary is that um, the profits are kind of jumping around a little bit uh, so we went from a loss a couple of years ago uh, to a nice 20 million profit and now back to a 10 million um, uh, dollar dollar loss so profit and loss account is bouncing around and um, you know it, it's 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 really not kind of quite quite delivering uh, you know especially with this falling sales um, let's go and look at the 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 the, the balance sheet. Um, so here's the balance sheet. So um, first of all, we're going to look at the uh, at the assets um, and uh, this bit here. So this is the non-current assets. This, this section here. So this is kind of this is the stuff that we own that we um, that we need to run the business. By far the biggest number is here. So this is the land, property, and equipment. Um, net of any depreciation, so what's known as the net book value of that. Um, there's quite a lot of goodwill on there, which means that they have grown through acquisition. They've got some investments in other equities, um, et cetera, et cetera. But this property, uh, plant and equipment, $324 million, uh, and that's really where the kind of the depreciation charge. So there's a, there's a lot of investment going on there. Um, up here in the, in the non 
so in the current asset, so this bit up here, we can see these two numbers together. This is the cash. So they've basically got, uh, uh, you know, in excess, they've got about $106 million of cash, um, which is just sitting there uh, waiting to fund the business. So they're quite strong in terms of their cash. A few other receivables, a little bit of inventory um, and a few other bits and pieces. And they've also got these derivative assets. And there's a note about how they value those derivative assets in the, um, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the auditor's report. Um, going down to the bottom half of the balance sheets, um, here we see the, uh, well, let, let's just compare the, um, uh, the, 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 the current liabilities. Um, so these are the, um, the, 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 the current assets of about 300 million. Um, and here are the current liabilities, uh, 163 million. So in effect, we're saying um, that they're kind of almost two times covered. So liquidity doesn't look like an issue. Um, they've got a little bit of current portion of long-term debt. We'd expect them to be refinancing that. So the accounts payable, accrued liabilities, they've got plenty of cash to be able to pay that. So I, I'm, you know, there's no alarm bells going off. Um, and then down the bottom, we've got some sort of long-term uh, uh, lease obligations, et cetera, and a long-term uh, portion of the debt. Um, so this looks like there's a short-term debt, long-term debt. It looks to me like th this is just a timing issue. So they're probably gonna refinance that, I would expect, if they can, obviously. A um, little bit further down, um, the the equity part, um, uh, and we can see the the investment. So here's here's uh, this is what the shareholders have invested, um, and then this is the accumulated deficit, which means that the, the total amount of loss they've made. So they've had investment of uh, 1.2 billion dollars, uh, and so far they've lost uh, nearly 700 million. Um, they're still making losses, you know. And are they going to be able to turn that around? But they've got enough cash to last them at least for a while. So let's go and have a look at the cash flow statement. Um, so that was a profit and loss account. Here's a, so movement in equity isn't really a problem because they're not they're obviously not paying out any dividends. Um, here's the cash flow, um, uh, and what we notice here is um, they are generating cash. So they are generating even though they're making a loss. They are generating cash. And the main reason that they are generating cash is that uh, uh, of this uh, depreciation charge. But also you'll notice that um, the accounts receivables has, has fallen. So now this is a kind of these are big numbers. Uh, and this is suggesting that there's a timing issue going on here. So it looks to me like they've got some big contracts. And it just so happens that if you get to the end of the year and they manage to get the, the contract settled, then the cash goes up. And if they haven't, um, then the cash kind of maybe has a it has a negative effect. So there's a little bit of kind of bouncing around um, going on there. Um, uh, which we need to be kind of we need to be aware of but anyway you know either way you know every year year on year they are generating cash which is good because we need to be able to generate cash in order to survive uh the rest of the cash flow shows um their investing activities now again this is a little bit of a misnomer so this says that they are generating cash from their investing activities which looks like they're selling the family silver but they are not um, so this line here, this shows the actual CapEx investment going on. Uh, and then the two lines just above that, I'll put that in a different color. So these two lines is effectively a cash movement. So they talk about this thing about um, purchases of short term investments uh, and maturities and sales of short term investments. So the way to think about that is a bit like your deposit account um, and they're just parking cash over here and then pulling it back out again. So every time they park cash in, they have to record it in this line here. Every time they take it out, they're recording it in this line here. Um, so these are kind of movements in cash, but because of the nature of the instruments, they have to call it investing activities rather than cash. So really what we need to do is to strip those numbers out um, uh, and really kind of look at the underlying uh, business. And here we see that they are investing. There's a little bit of cash come in from the sale um, of a subsidiary um, and a little bit of cash coming in from the disposal of property, plant and equipment. Um, but the fact that you know these numbers up here um, are bigger than these numbers down here means that they are net investors, which is good. Uh, and then the last bit down here is the um, so this last section here is all about how they um, uh, how they're funding the activity. And you notice 
um, that there's so this these two lines here um, are looking at the movement in debt. So the proceeds from debt instruments means that they've been borrowing money and uh, the repayments means be, they've been repaying. So a couple of years ago, they borrowed 20 uh, uh, million and they repaid 200 million. So that was, if you remember, uh, the, um, the interest they were paying in 2018 was double that they were paying in 2019. And we can see that during 2018, they substantially reduced their debt. They just said, look, we've got too much debt. It's costing us too much in terms of interest. We've got to refinance it. Um, and then what you notice here is that these two numbers are pretty similar. Let me just uh, clear up, clear my drawings to make it nice and easy. So these two numbers are pretty similar. These two numbers are pretty similar. This is just debt refinancing. So they're borrowing money over here to repay the money over here. So if you remember when we looked at the current liabilities, they had about 50 million of debt, which was due soon. Uh, where are they going to get the money in order to repay that debt? They're going to go and borrow some more money. OK, so it looks to me like, you know, the markets are open. Um, uh, these guys are able to refinance themselves. So it does depend on the markets being open. So if the markets get spooked and they suddenly go, no, we're not going to give you any more money. Then, you know, they've got a, you know, a, you know, a few issues going on. However, um, they are generating cash. Uh, they, um, you know, they do have cash in the bank. It, you know, there's no alarm bells on the horizon. Um, it looks to me like, you know, financially, they are reasonably well uh, positioned. Um, it's just it's just that loss. You know, they made a 20 million dollar profit the previous year. It's only a six percent net margin. So it's pretty low. Um, they made a 10 million dollar loss uh, this year. You know, they need to stop bouncing around. You know what markets really like is nice, smooth earnings you know that the, the earnings are bouncing around too much we want smooth earnings we want growth um you know we don't like seeing a top line which is reducing so you know there's a couple of alarm bells a couple of things that says you know this is higher risk than your average um and therefore i would expect to be paying a um or, or, or getting a um a risk premium to that so um with that in mind let's go and have a look at the uh, the share price and see how it's been performing so um, as you mentioned, you'd have lost a little bit of money. So this is kind of the, the, uh, uh, the flotation um, a point over here. Um, a, probably a trader's wet dream as we bounce around and bad news and then good news and then bad news and then good news and then bad news. And it's, you know, quite frankly, I mean, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you just went away and, and, and didn't look at the stock, you'd have kind of, you'd have lost a little bit of money, but not too much. And if you watched it every single day, you'd have been, you know, very happy and very sad um, almost, you know, before your tea was, 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 um, was cold. Um, anyway, uh, the summary is, let's just clear that. Let's, let's just look at it in a little bit more detail on a, on a more recent basis. Um, so here we go. This is the year. Um, uh, still bouncing around. We're up on the year. So it's kind of, it was going nowhere um, uh, at late 2020. And then suddenly it's kind of lots of interest. Uh, and I think that probably reflects your comments about Reddit, um, perhaps, and, and kind of, you know, lots of sort of day traders and meme stocks and all that kind of stuff. But where are we now? Well, you know, the market cap is 1.82 billion. Um, so what does that actually mean? Well, we can't talk in terms of earnings because, you know, there are no earnings, but, um, uh, you know, 1.82 is. Um, it's, about, it's about 9% of uh, nine times of sales. Sorry, nine times sales. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, you're right. Well, it, it's, it's about six times sales. So sales are 291,000. Um, right. uh, so it's about 6.2 times sales. Um, you know, there's 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 a little bit of a balance sheet. There's not much. So you've got one point three um, uh, a billion of, you know, it, it basically it's pretty much all goodwill. Um, the balance sheet's only half a, you know, uh, uh, it's about 500, um, 500 million, half a billion. Um, so it's one point three billion of, uh, of goodwill. Um, you know, even if you go to the previous year, you know, uh, and, and, and you type in your kind of earnings of uh, whatever that is, 20,000, you're still looking in at 100 times sales, um, you know, which is, you know, it, 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 it looks expensive to me. I, you know, I, you, I'm not I'm, I'm not sort of looking at, you know, something that is screaming. This is an absolute bargain. But again, you know, this is we're just looking at the financial fundamentals. You know, this doesn't look like a company that's going to fall over. <clears throat> in the next in the next few months or the next year or so um uh, and so really you know you're you're betting on the you know on the product 
uh, on the management team, on the sales pipeline, on their ability to you know, develop the market, to exploit that market. Um, let me put it this way, Moe, we've seen worse, okay? So we've seen companies which are financially in a much worse, worse state um, than clean energy. Um, uh, on the other hand, it doesn't scream, uh, uh, you know, cheap, 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 buy now, buy now at me. Yep, I, I, I would agree. Uh, and, and just to note, like the, it was in June 2021 where the stock moved up just over 30 percent. Uh, and that was due to um, so just there, the latter stage, June 2021. And that was due to, you know, Wall Street bets basically identifying this as a meme stock. So there is quite a bit of speculation there. You know, you have to kind of consider that within your investment thesis. And there's also the element that we talked about, which is the trans. It seems like there's some element where they're either transitioning or adding those services and really investing in services revenue because they're noticing that decline in the product. And that could be due to various reasons. It could be, it could be cost, which they've been trying to become more competitive with. And it could be that they've kind of reached the limit in the markets that they're involved with. So there's definitely an element there that needs to be considered. But there are two videos that I would like you to look at. And actually, it's not I like, I really recommend that you look at. Uh, so one video is um, AFC Energy, which is another clean tech business that we looked at. Uh, and, and another video is a company that we looked at just before this one. And uh, Ted mentioned we've looked at companies that are far worse financial health than this one. Uh, and that's a company called Active Energy Group, right? So have a look at those two companies. They're going to give you some really, really good context, but also kind of you're going to it's going to help you look at some themes as well in terms of this industry and what to look out for. So hopefully that's useful for you. Again, like, share, subscribe. If you have another company you would like us to look at, leave a note in the comment section. But until then, until the next video, bye for now. Ted, thank you very much. Good to speak to you, Moe. See you in the next video.